What's going on everybody? Oklahoma Kid here. Welcome to another Adventures of the Oklahoma Kid. And uh, today we have something that I've been debating, pondering, wondering if I should do. And decided that I'd just go ahead and do it. What is this? What are we playing? What, what's, what's going on here? What is this? Uh, this is reality. Yeah. And <laughs> not a video game. And it's something that, uh, like I said, I've been debating on whether I was going to do. And I analyzed it and came up with three uh, certainties or facts. One of them is, it's my channel. The second one is, according to Bonnie, I do what I want. <laughs> and the third one is, you know, what is the channel about? The channel's about me having fun and hanging out with friends and, and, and getting into stuff with them and having all kinds of fun and wonderfulness and uh, this is this is a part of that and sharing all that with you and so in the spirit of that uh, I'm bringing something for you today that is a little bit different but something that that I find extremely fun and I love doing this and I want to share it with you guys and it is fly time and I just heard somebody disconnect <laughs> no but there's still somebody watching, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to bring you a bunch of fly tying videos. Um, probably three or four to begin with. And the first one is going to be super, 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 super simple. Anybody can tie this. No problem at all. And they're going to progressively get a little bit harder as we go through. Um, so the first one is, if you've never tied a fly at all, I've never seen anybody tie a fly and just show you how ridiculously simple it is and it's a it's a really good effective pattern that will catch fish whether you're going for bluegills small bass trout anything it'll catch fish so we're gonna bring that to you and we're gonna bring you a bunch of uh, life hacks and whatnot as well so uh, let's get to it first pattern we're gonna tie is a worm that's right a worm and you say, well, it's not fly tying. How can you tie a worm? Like, what's going on? Well, 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 calm, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. We're going to do it here. And we have, uh, we're going to bring up a materials list. We're starting with a size 8 ultra fine dry fly hook by Orbis. Usually I use Tiemco. Uh, these are some old hooks that I had left over. Size 8. Um, that's pretty big for fly tying around here. And then we're going to take a, a bead. Just have a little bag of beads here. And you put the bead on the hook. Like that. And we're going to put the hook in the vise. Kind of, kind of, sort of like that. And I have a fancy super vise that I can go all around, do all kinds of stuff like that. And right now the bead just kind of goes wherever. We haven't secured it yet. And then we're going to use some 3 aught thread. And this one is by Danville. Uh, it's actually a waxed monocord in white. And little life hack on thread. There's uh, a bunch of different sizes. There's about four different sizes of thread that's um, kind of standard use in freshwater. Um, there's 3 aught, 6 aught, 8 aught, 16 aught. The bigger the number, the smaller the thread. So this is kind of pretty good sized thread for freshwater. And let's say there's uh, 20 colors. So 4 times 20 carry the six is 80 and let's say you bought it at a bargain basement price of two dollars that's 160 dollars peeps guess what I could save you a whole bunch of money we're gonna get this by one of each size in white buy yourselves a colored permanent marker and color your thread. Just the part you're going to use, uh, whether it's green, brown, black, 
and get yourself all different colors and bam you just saved yourself a whole bunch of money on thread look at that SMRT so uh, I tell people at work that are tie flies and they think it's all magical and full of pixie dust and fairy farts or something like that and it's and it, it, it's not you're gonna see it's really 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 simple the other thing we're gonna use is some micro chenille in kind of a chocolatey brown and that's gonna form our worm and so let's get started we're gonna tie our thread on and just tying your thread on you don't have to tie a knot or anything watch this we just wrap around the hook okay and then we wrap like that Okay. Now a lot of patterns will say to um, cover the hook shank and what they're talking about is wrapping the thread all the way down the hook using what they call touching turns. Uh, and that means each thread wrap touches the wrap before it. Uh, if you watch professional fly tires, which I am not, um, they can do that really, really, really fast and they'll just <laughs> all the way down. A really easy way to do that is take your the part of the thread that you're going to cut off and throw away and just hold it out on an angle and that way it slides all of your wraps up so you have good touching turns and you can go pretty quick whoops I was watching the camera it wasn't much what I was doing uh, so we're going to put a actually we're going to undo all this because we haven't colored a thread yet but you can see how that's done. And that's how simple it is to mess up, to screw up. <laughs> Alright, so right here we're going to stop. Grab a marker. and just color the thread. This part we're going to throw away so we don't need to color that. And look, now we have brown thread. Okay, so I'm just going to come back that far. And cut that off. Bring my bead up back just a little bit <clears throat> and you can see we ran out of coloring so we're going to color some more thread here and we're going to secure the bead and I don't want it all the way up at the eye but I want it a fair ways over so I'm just going to kind of hold it with my finger and wrap over it and wrap back I got too much thread out and we're going to wrap over it. Wrap back, wrap over, wrap back. And just keep kind of doing that until it's secure. And then we're going to wind to the back. Uh, using my boss skills. <laughs> doing touch and turns without the little cheat that I just showed you. So then we're going to color the thread again. And just keep doing this, just keep coloring however much thread you need. You don't have to color the whole spool. And I want to go right to the back. There we go. Now, you can grab your chenille. find the end. It's a big mess right here. And I can't find the end. I need to find the end. Not this end. So, how much should you measure out? I'm going to go two hook lengths. So, a worm's going to be like that big. 
And actually, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. So just over two hook lengths. And we're just going to cut it. Now the other thing you need for this is a lighter. Now be very careful. So you can see that this end has been burned and it has a nice little taper. This end has not. So what we're going to do is we have a lighter. Okay? And we're not going to put the material in the flame. We're not going to do that. Okay? We're going to light the lighter and we're just going to get it close. Like this. Like that. And it kind of looks like a worm now. And so we're going to position it on the hook, and I want about a third of it in front and the rest of it behind. So I want it probably about like that. And so I'm going to hold it in place with my fingers. And this is going to be called a pinch wrap because I'm going to bring the thread up. I'm actually going to grab the thread with my fingers, wrap it around, and then I'm going to slowly pull the thread through my fingers so that the material stays in position exactly where I want it. I'm going to put a second thread wrap there, lift it up, come forward just a little bit further, you see what we're doing? We're putting ribs in here. Because uh, a, a worm has like little rings in it, doesn't it? You know it does. About two wraps. And then go further ahead. And then the worm has a collar where its heart is. So that's... Whoops. That's where this bead is going to come into play. I need just a little bit more colored thread. We'll finish this off. And now I need to advance the thread in front of the bead. Hold this down. Two wraps. A little bit further forward, two wraps, and then build up a little bit of a head here so you can secure it. And that's pretty much our fly. So we have like a little tail, like I said, two thirds out this end, one third out this end, and that looks like a little worm. And I pretty much guarantee you're going to catch fish on this guy. So I want to hold the head back, and I'm going to use this guy. Now this is a whipped finisher. Um, has a little kink right here. Has a little hook up here. So how you use this is you put the thread in the kink, then on the hook, and then you wind it around the head. So like that, bring it up so it's around the kink and the hook and then you just rotate it and it goes over the thread that you were using before and then to get it off take it off the kink first and then you have it left on the hook and you just pull the thread up and then pop the hook out pull it nice and tight and we'll bam we're done cut your thread off and if you were tying along with me you just tied your first fly
super simple, easy. Anybody can do it. We're going to take some head cement. And to do that, I'm going to take a dubbing needle. Flip or fly upside down. Another good reason to get a really good vise. You never know when you need that fly upside down. Just grab a little dab of head cement, put it right on the thread wraps, and especially right on the knot. And that's it. That is your worm. And that's your first fly. And we're going to tie more. And we're going to have fun. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it funny, amusing, maybe even learned something. Who knows? And uh, next time we're going to come back and we're going to tie a little bit more difficult fly. We're going to tie this guy right here. Whoa! Dropped it. So next time we're going to tie this guy right here. It's a little dry fly. We put it in a vise. So you can actually see it. So we're going to tie that guy next time. And so next time we're going to tie this guy, a little dry fly, and we got some wings on it, and we'll show you how to tie this guy up. Uh, but until then, thank you for joining me, hopefully you enjoyed it, fish your worm, and hopefully you have good luck with it. And I'll catch you in the next one guys, later!